Okay, now in, in this segment of the video, I'm going to demonstrate putting in nut plates. I have chosen to mount my nose cone to the airframe using nut plates. You're probably saying, what is a nut plate? This is a nut plate. And I'm going to be drilling some holes and riveting this to the airframe. And what it is, is this will go, this plate will be right here on the airframe. And the nut will go through the nose cone and then tie and screw down into this nut plate. This one has a floating type nut plate that allows us to move around a little bit. And I'll explain a little bit later why that is important. The tools that we're going to be using is going to be a nut plate tool that's used to locate the hole for mounting these nut plates. And if you notice that this is the center of the nut plate and this tool is set up. <laughs> Let me get this on here. There we go. That center hole, which will be on the airframe, just happens to be the point of reference for where the other two holes for the rivets that are going to rivet this nut plate to the airframe with. So you can see it's a nice hole locator. Now you can buy this tool. There's a number of them available through aircraft tool supply, ATS tools, uh, an outfit called The Yard. That's theyard.com, a number of them. They're about $35 or $40 a piece. I have a number of them because I use them a lot in my job at work. But for your use on the aircraft, it's well worth the money to buy one of these. Now, I've already gone ahead and located uh, the center line and drilled the pilot holes on the side of the airframe to where my nut plates are going to be located. In this case, five of them along the side here. This red line, if you can see it on the video, is the outer edge of the nose cone itself. That's the outer edge that I marked. And so my center hole for the nut plate is going to be about an inch inside of this hole. Now, a lot of guys will say, well, why didn't you go a quarter inch like we do with other things? You want to have at least a one inch overlap because I'm going to drill this hole out eventually to a quarter inch size hole so that when my stainless steel screw goes through there, goes through that nose cone, there's at least an eighth of an inch space larger than the screws itself. So that screw is never going to actually touch that nose cone piece. There will be a rubber washer and then a steel or uh, yes, a stainless steel washer underneath the stainless steel screw. So we have the screw head, stainless steel washer, and a rubber washer that will go through and then tighten down and pull in to here into the nut plate to hold the nose cone onto the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out these holes now. These are currently number 30 holes that I use for my pilot drill. And I'm going to drill those out to number 10 size holes for my nut plate tool. Okay, now I've opened the hole up so that my nut plate tool guide pin will fit in there. Okay, eventually this hole will be opened up to quarter inch after I get the nut plate, get ready to install the nut plate. But now I'm going to switch to a number 40 drill bit because that's the size of the hole for the rivet that's going to go in there to hold the nut plate onto the airframe, a number 40 drill bit. So we'll take the side first that <clears throat> doesn't have the pin sticking through and we're going to put it on here. And I'm going to go ahead and just drill through Okay. 
Then I'll just go ahead and turn the, this plate around. I'll put the guide pin through, and now you see that locks it into place. So now I can go to the other side, or the opposite side of the hole that I drilled first, and drill that in just like that. Now I'll take and I'll clico a nut plate into place and show you how that lines up. At this point I could go ahead and open this hole up to a quarter inch, but for the sake of this demonstration I will wait on that. Go ahead and put this in here and give you an idea of how that's going to work. Now the oops. I forgot to deburr my hole. A little bit of a burr there that kept it from fitting up flush. I'll have to do that. Right now, you can't see it, but on the other side of this piece of aluminum is that nut plate. It will be riveted into place right here, and that hole will be opened up to a quarter inch, which will allow my screw, my stainless steel screw, to come through the nose cone and fastened down to the nut plate. So I'll go ahead and change drill bits here now and open that up to a quarter inch and then deburr the holes and go ahead and rivet that into place. And that's all it takes to, to do a nut plate to get one mounted onto the airframe and to have it done accurately. The places that will use nut plates, at least on my airplane, and I'm sure most uh, fellows that choose to go this route will do the same, of course, will be the nose cone itself. You can do the same thing for your windscreen. I prefer to put nut plates into my windows and windscreens uh, on the Excalibur. I did that on my Challenger and a number of other kit airplanes that I've built over the years and of course at work on certificated aircraft. <clears throat> so the windscreen will have nut plates which will allow me to unscrew the windscreen in case I have to replace it at any time. On the top of the Excalibur we'll have these fiberglass combings that will actually close up in the top there and provide some streamlining. Those will be put on by nut plates as well so anytime I have to take the wings off or anything for maintenance or an inspection, an annual or whatever, using nut plates is an inexpensive way to put a removable uh, screw or part in place. And that's all there is to it. Thank you.